Do you work with Lambda, but don't quite understand how global variables inside a Lambda work? In this video, we're going to be diving deep into how global variables work and how you can use them in your applications. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be diving deep into the global variables that you can access inside an AWS Lambda. So a global variable is a variable that is defined outside of your handler. Because it's outside of the handler, it is persisted between your Lambda invocations. So to understand this, you need to understand a little bit about how a Lambda works so that we can understand the global variable situation. When you first get a request to a new Lambda, there is something called a cold start. This is where AWS spins up a container which has all of the settings that you need for your Lambda. It downloads the code into that container and then executes your Lambda code. If you have any variables inside that Lambda that are declared outside of the handler, they are declared into a global space. Once your Lambda has finished, they still exist. So if you get hit with a second Lambda request, then that new Lambda will be run in the same container and therefore will have access to that global variable. What happens when there are multiple requests that are concurrent? Well, you have multiple containers running at the same time. And this is one thing that catches some people out. Because there are separate containers, they are isolated, which means inside one of your containers, you may have your global variable set to one value, but in another one, it could be a different value. This is just one thing to consider when you are creating your lambdas and using these global variables. Here we've got a simple lambda function where we are going to be trying to get some weather message for a user. The first time a message comes in, it's gonna hit this, uh, this expression and expired on is not set in the cached data, which is outside of our handler. So it's gonna skip over it. It's then going to hit this fake weather API, which is gonna get the weather and temperature and in reality, this fake weather API request is just going to delay returning these two values by about three seconds. Once we've got those two values from the API, we're going to set the cached data to be an object with both the weather, temperature, and an expiry date, which we're gonna to set to be 30 times 1,000, which is gonna be 30 seconds in the future. Finally, we're going to return that string and send that back to the customer. If we scroll up, we can see that because this let cache data is outside of the handler, it's going to be global. So the second time that a request comes in to this Lambda and this specifically, the Lambda in the same container as the previous run, it's gonna hit this expression and as long as this second request is less than 30 seconds after the first, it's going to create this using the cached data for the weather and temperature, which means we never have to make that second API request. At the top, I've made a test event. So if I hit test, we can see that this is taking a little bit of time. And when it finishes, we see the weather is sunny and it is 15 degrees Celsius. And if we scroll down, we can see that took 3.006 seconds. Now that the cached data is in the global variable, if we hit test again, 
we can see that that took 24 milliseconds instead of 3000 milliseconds. This is a massive saving and is a really good way of reducing requests to third parties where the result is unlikely to change over a short period of time, such as with weather data, or if you're looking for a status of something. But this shouldn't be used if you're doing something where it's going to change for every single request. So for example, if I passed up a location into this, the weather isn't going to be the same if I pass up a location of Manchester, or if I pass up a location of London, so you couldn't use this same cached data structure. There are actually NPM packages, which are designed specifically for this purpose, and I believe it is called Lambda Cache. So there's another example of where we can use caching, and this time it works slightly against us. So here we have a very simple function where we pass up a score and a mode. So this is a score of a player and the mode that they were playing that game in. If the mode is hard, we're going to change the config.minimum score to 25. And then we're going to check, does the score of the user, is it less than the minimum score? If it is, we tell them they need to get a better score. If it is higher than the minimum score, we need to send a congratulations message. So the first event I've made is a player who is playing on easy mode and they've not got a very high score, say of 30. Because 30 is less than 50, when we make the request, we get a response you need to score a, get a higher score to get onto the easy leaderboard and you got 30 out of 50, where 50 is the minimum score. If we now change the request to be a hard score and we hit send, we can see congratulations, you've made it onto the hard leaderboard because they got 45 points and to get onto the hard leaderboard, you only needed 25. What this has actually done behind the scenes is it has changed that minimum score from 50 to 25. So if we now send the previous bad score again and hit send, it's done something a bit weird. It said, congratulations, you've made it onto the easy leaderboard with a score of 20, 30 out of 25. That is because this global variable of config has had its minimum score changed from 50 to 25. And when we make this request, even though it is on easy mode, it has changed the minimum score to 25 and 30 is above 25. And this is one of the errors that you can have whenever you do use global variables. In this video, we have gone deep onto global variables inside AWS Lambda. We've looked at how they work, how they are stored inside a container, and the fact that you have to consider a couple of different things, such as multiple containers inside your system. We've then looked at some code and saw how we could implement some local caching to reduce the amount of time it takes to do some of your Lambda requests. If you've learned something new in this video, make sure to give it a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm share this video to more developers just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe down here and turn on the bell notification so you get notified next time I upload a deep dive video.